Okay, so we have a 64-year-old woman, and she reports occasional fatigue. We see this nomogram, okay, where parathyroid hormone on the y-axis, calcium on the x-axis, and you can see that parathyroid hormone is high, calcium's low, and normally calcium is 8.4 to 10.2, okay, so we can see the calcium is around 7 uh, milligrams per deciliter, and once again, parathyroid hormone is high. So question is just simply asking, what's the diagnosis? So we look at the answer choices here. Uh, now you might look at choice A, metastatic malignancy, and be like, hmm, like not really sure how that relates. We'll come back to that. It's a bit more challenging. Uh, let's look at parathyroid adenoma, choice E. That's probably the easier one to eliminate here. You can see parathyroid hormone is high, yes. But in parathyroid adenoma, which is primary hyperparathyroidism, our calcium would be high because PTH obviously is going to cause increased serum calcium, okay? Not only is it going to cause calcium to be resorbed from bone and enter the bloodstream, but it's also going to promote calcium reabsorption in the distal kidney, okay? And then, of course, parathyroid hormone activates 1-alpha-hydroxylase in the PCT of the kidney, uh, which converts 25 uh, hydroxy D3, the inactive form, into 125 dihydroxy D3, the active form, and then 125 D3 goes to the small bowel where it promotes calcium and phosphate absorption. But uh, that's one of the mechanisms through the small bowel as well that calcium would be increased in the setting of a parathyroid adenoma. So, primary hyperparathyroidism, uh, high parathyroid hormone, high serum calcium. Uh, we would not have low serum calcium, so we can eliminate that. It should be noted that secondary hyperparathyroidism in the setting of renal failure would in fact have a high PTH and a low calcium, but we don't see renal failure here as one of the answers, okay? Uh, so I'm just gonna work backwards because I started with choice E. We look at osteoporosis. High yield for the USMLE to know that osteoporosis, everything is normal, okay? So this blue dot would be right in the middle of the normal range for both PTH, for calcium and also for phosphate and for ALP. Everything is normal in osteoporosis. That's a good factoid to know. Um, once you memorize it, obviously not a big deal, but when you ask students that, uh, when they haven't heard that factoid before and they just have to guess, they always say something is off. Like they'll always say, oh, calcium's low. No, it's not, it's just everything's normal, okay? High yield. Osteopetrosis, some of you are probably like, what the fuck? Uh, osteopetrosis, that's pediatrics. That's going to be actually a congenital deficiency of carbonic anhydrase 2, which uh, that, en that enzyme is normally required for osteoclast activity. Okay, so inside osteoclasts, uh, there's going to be the, the splitting of carbonic acid into bicarb and a proton, and then the osteoclasts are going to concentrate those protons on the bone surface in order to induce resorption. So osteopetrosis, also known as albers schoenberg syndrome, is characterized by increased bone density in children. Um, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. So despite the increased bone density, uh, it's not just the density that matters, it's the actual architecture of the bone that's not, a, that's not proper because of the herversion canals, etc. Uh, so the kids are actually at increased risk of fractures. So if they tell you a kid has fractures at uh, multiple uh, stages of healing, you have to think of, of course, child abuse. If they tell you the kid's avoiding eye contact. Uh, if they tell you uh, the kid has blue sclerae, obviously that's very buzzy for osteogenesis imperfecta, collagen one mutation. But if they like, you know, if you're able to eliminate osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, it doesn't sound like child abuse osteopetrosis is essentially the diagnosis you go to where you say, okay, well, that's a cause of fractures, different stages of healing uh, due to increased bone density. Despite the increased bone density, there's still greater fragility of the bone. Everything would be in the normal range as well, okay? So like osteopetrosis, or sorry, like osteoporosis, osteopetrosis, everything in the normal range. And then we look at osteomalacia. That's our correct answer here. So osteomalacia is vitamin D deficiency in adults. Same thing as rickets in children. So first things first is USMLE loves to give arrow questions for 
uh, osteomalacia and rickets, where you're going to have a down arrow for both serum calcium and a down arrow for serum phosphate. And the reason is because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, a 125D3 is going to promote calcium and phosphate absorption through the small bowel. So if you have vitamin D deficiency, you're going to have a, a down arrow for both calcium and phosphate. Uh, a lot to talk about on that front. We could do like a big lecture on all the parathyroid and vitamin D stuff, but just for the sake of this question, just I'm telling you osteomalacia and rickets, you're going to have a decreased serum calcium, decreased serum phosphate. And because of that low serum calcium, PTH goes up to compensate. Okay, So calcium normally binds to calcium sensing receptors in the parathyroid glands, and that will induce negative feedback to decrease parathyroid hormone release. Uh, so if we have decreased calcium, obviously we're going to have less negative feedback, increased PTH release. So this is a bit challenging, okay? So uh, it's, a, it's quite an insidious question because it looks so simple. You're just like, I'm looking at PTH and calcium. Uh, why is this hard? But osteomalacia, okay? A lot of students get it wrong. So calcium's down, PTH goes up to compensate. Uh, parathyroid hormone need not be elevated, okay? Like you can have a normal parathyroid hormone level in osteomalacia and rickets, but it's the only answer that works in this question. So metastatic malignancy, why is that wrong? It's actually the opposite of everything we see here. So metastatic malignancy can induce hypercalcemia. So malignancy will go to bone, and that uh, once the malignancy is in the bone, it causes a, a, a localized cytokine reaction, which uh, induces lysis and resorption of bone. So uh, metastatic malignancy is one of the most common causes of hypercalcemia in a hospital. I think it's something like 90%. Don't quote me on the percentage, but I think it's like 90% of hypercalcemia cases in a hospital are due to either metastatic malignancy or primary hyperparathyroidism. Okay, so those are two very common causes. So that would cause increased serum calcium, metastatic malignancy. And in turn, your PTH would go down uh, to compensate, right? So PTH would go down, that makes sense. We have more negative feedback. So our dot would be over here, uh, high calcium, low parathyroid hormone for metastatic malignancy. Once again, our osteomalacia dot uh, would be for low calcium and high PTH. PTH has gone up to compensate. Osteopetrosis and osteoporosis, everything's normal, okay? And then parathyroid adenoma, we'd have a high uh, PTH, but we'd also have a high calcium. The dot would be over here. That's pretty much it for this, okay? So uh, once again, a lot we can chat about, but uh, these types of questions are uh, of good yieldness for this step. Okay, that's it.